if, if you remember when um, I was showing the Santa sleigh, I had a decade counter and a 555 module for running the, the LEDs. So I saw this article suggestion for a, a different kind of LED circuit, which would display letters. It would show the, the letters W, E, L, C, O, M, E, one after the other. But they would all, they would, you know, W would stay on, they, then the E would stay on right the way through. And so you'd have the word welcome, and then it would cut itself off and start again. Um, and I thought that would be quite good for the likes of um, an exhibition, you know, so I, you could have Merg or Meccano or something on the, on the top, and it would be quite interesting. And I thought, given that I'd already had the, the, the timer and the 4017, set up, this might be quite straightforward to do. But then I came across something called an SCR, a, a silicon controlled rectifier. So I emailed Davy to ask what this was. And he then said, well, you better dis discuss all this on Sunday. So yeah, so that would be interesting to know. Now, the other thing that I've, I've been looking at is how on earth you build this series of parallel sets of series of of LEDs. Also, I mean, the, the, other, the other thing is when I look at this W, um, it, I, how actually that is actually physically wired is puzzles me greatly. <laughs> now that's, that's fairly straightforward. What it is, is groups of four, four diodes in series and then a resistor and in parallel with that, four diodes in series, and then the resistor. And in parallel with that, four diodes in series, and then the resistor. And then you physically shuffle them to go into the shape that you want. Right, okay, okay. All right, it's, yeah. not, the, it's not the most uh, enlightening diagram I've ever seen in my life, it has to be said. No, I, yeah. It, Brendan had asked how the circuit worked and uh, what the SCRs were, so I thought it'd be worth having a look at that. But actually, part of the circuit that Brendan showed, I'll show it again in a moment, we covered it in the, the Electronics 2 course. It's essentially using a 555 timer uh, to send out pulses. And the main, the 4017 chip is a, what they call a decade counter. So what I'll do, I'll switch cameras and we can just talk through the circuit. Now, that's not the circuit. I've covered up part, as you see here. That's the standard uh, lead chaser. The 555 just keeps putting out positive pulses here. And the way the 4017 responds is that every time a positive pulse comes in, the first positive pulse will send this pin here at high. That, that first led will light up. The second pulse comes in, that will go low again. The lead goes off, but the second one pulses high. So the second lead comes on. The third pulse puts two off, but puts the next one on. So at any one time, there's only one lead on, the rest are all switched off. So, and when it gets to the bottom on its own, it just resets and starts again. It can handle up to, this is not like 10 outputs being used, it can handle up to 10 different outputs. That's why it's called the decade counter. But you in turn can make it count to four or count to seven, it doesn't have to count to 10. You can reset it yourself, and we'll show it in a moment. So that's the standard way of doing it. So you've a pulse coming in and just switching. Because there's only one on at a time, you don't require a dropper for every lead. You can have just one common dropper. Because only one is actually active at a time. There's only one drawing current through it at a time. It's a very low component count to get a lead chaser. 
I've got one here, a little commercial one. And again, you can see hopefully a chip down here. Surface mount, that's the 555. That chip there, that's the 4017. Only one lights at a time. It's got a trimmer and we can use that to go very fast. Take out the way here to have different speeds. So as it stands, that's all it does. You can even simplify it further if you're willing to sacrifice uh, control over the speed. You can simply put a, a flashing LED there. Add just two components. The, thick, the flashing LED will flash at a thick speed, usually about one hertz, or I think some are two hertz. And as they flash, they provide the pulse. So effectively, with a handful of components, you can have a running light. And we actually use that uh, here. So there's the flashing LED being used as an input and that's it cycling through the, the outputs. I think you can maybe just see the, yeah, you can just see the flashing LED there. But it's a bit blinded by the, the other LEDs. While I'm at it, I'll show you the, the, this other part. I've got a stepper motor driver here. There's another 4017. There's a, a 555, and instead of making it do 10 outputs, it's only doing four, which is the four we need to drive the stepper motor. So we can find the way in, there we go. As the 555 pulses, it's making these step through one at a time. And then they in turn are stepping the stepper motor through. So at the top, again, very low component count. Well, that's not quite how it's done in this circuit. That's a circuit that uh, Bren was shown earlier. We've still got a, a pulse generator. We've still got a decade counter. But instead of the output is going straight to an LED, which is meant to be, these are meant to be the lights here, aren't they? Instead of going to the lights, they go to a silicon controlled rectifier. So the additional components are an SCR for each of the outputs and a switching transistor. So what's all this about? Well, Let's look at an SCR first. The clues in the name, I suppose, it's a rectifier. If I took away that part, you're looking at a diode effectively there. So I've got a diode, conducts in one direction only. It's a DC component, the SCR. You can get AC versions, but this one's a DC uh, thyristor and it won't pass current unless you put the correct uh, value on its gate to allow it to pass current. If you pull it high, in other words, it suddenly allows current to flow. And a bit like we discussed uh, last time about latching relays, this is a latching circuit. That's not a switch, it's a push button. Or it could be an input coming in from you know, a, a transistor or microprocessor or whatever. But once you've done one pulse, it'll stay on forever. The only way to get it off is to remove the power. So that's the circuit of it. And I made a quick demo of it here. Cool. So all I've got there is 
there's a silicon control rectifier, there's a, a, a dropper resistor and the LED and a push button. Doesn't light, I push the button just once, it lights. Don't require to push it 10 times, once is enough. And it'll stay that forever. The only way to make it drop out is to remove the power. Put the power back on, nothing happens again until you trigger it. So the SCR, that's how it works. How does it work in this circuit then? Let's not look them right. Let's start with, with this transistor. It's a PNP type, which means if it's at zero voltage, it's on. If it's at a high voltage, it's switched off. Now we know for a, for a start that these pins initially are all at zero volts. They only pulse high when they get pulses in. So pin six that you see here, when you first switch on, is at zero volts. Zero volts comes up, PNP, it's switched on. In other words, it'll let current flow through, through any of those LEDs up to the positive supply. Through any LED up to the positive supply. But when it gets to the point when it, when it goes high, goes high, goes high, goes high, when that goes high at the bottom, the last one, it switches off the power, which is the equivalent of me pulling out the power supply in the SCR that I showed you here. Instead of me physically pulling the, 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 the power off, it cuts it off via that transistor. So, the very first step then is the first pulse comes in, makes pin three go high, that triggers the SCR. When it's triggered, that light will light up. But even better, it'll stay lit, even when you take away the pulse that was here. The second pulse comes in, that's gone low, doesn't matter because that's been latched. Pin two goes high now, which will trigger that SCR, which lights up that LED or set of LEDs. And then when you put the next pulse in, doesn't matter that pin two drops to zero because it's latched. Now if pin four goes high, same thing. So it works its way down, and as each of these go high just for a pulse, they all stay on. So, for example, if we got to pin one being pulsed, it'll be high, they'll all be low, but they'll all still be switched on. So the light comes on one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, until you get to the last pin here, which goes high and switches the power off and they'll all drop out. And then it'll start, reset and do the same again. The SCRs, generally speaking, um, handle quite high currents. They're designed for quite high currents. There's no problem in, for example, uh, taking away the set of LEDs we're discussing earlier and putting in junk, chunks of um, LED strips. As you know, you can cut them into sets, little sets of three. You could have letters spelled out in, in groups of three instead of using lots of LEDs with, with their own droppers. It can handle the current. The only thing you have to worry about then, folks, is that this particular uh, circuit uses a 2N2907. I looked up the spec. It's quite happy to switch 40 volts, but it's got a maximum of 600 milliamps, which we then need to take into account because it depends how many, if it's M-E-R-G, that's only, we're only using four, four sets of letters. But this 4017 can handle 10 outputs. 
in reality only nine because the tenth one will be used to reset the circuit. So this can handle up to nine different uh, outputs. So you then have to say, well, each output, once they're all lit, is 600 divided by nine, which is what, roughly 70 milliamps. I feel there's 70 milliamps worth of lead strips for any of these, unless I change this transistor to a bigger job. And it's some stuff that can handle a higher current. So it can be used in the way it's designed here to switch through and switch on different circuits. It doesn't have to be letters, by the way. It, couldn't, it doesn't have to be LEDs. It could be relays being held on. It could be motors that, that are kept on or whatever. It's your choice. But that's how the circuit works and the purpose of the SCRs being there. Hey. Any, that, any questions? That's really helpful, Davey. Thank you. Any questions? What we just looked at? I think the, uh, the application itself could be used for buildings as well. I can understand yeah. Brendan's point where by a big, a big screen saying Merg or Meccano, but if you were to reduce the size of the LEDs down to microbits, then you have the opportunity to use them for, let's say, the, the buildings are between the 1930s Art Deco right up to maybe the 70s where you could see like hotel h-o-t-e-l on a building or cinemas often used to do that theaters would do that yeah so there's a huge amount of um scope for yeah uh, simulating neon simulating neon exactly the yeah. old neon signs you could also use it for lighting up buildings in a sequence for nighttime like street lighting or whatever Mm -hmm. coming on at a set time I mean you know, especially the gas lamp, lamps where you've got a lamp lighter going around and sort of light one uh -huh. lamp and then going to the next so you could bring them up in a set yeah. sequence then yeah. David could you instead of having the, the letters come on put a relay in there of um, one of these Arduino um, eight, eight way relay boards and then you wouldn't have any problems how many LEDs you could put into it. Oh yeah, there's no problem. You could replace where we've got the LEDs there just with a, an ordinary relay. And that would switch the relay on and keep it on. If they're doing it, the example Eric was talking about, the, about the lamp lighter, we wouldn't use exactly that circuit because they've used the last one to reset. So you wouldn't want the lamp lighter to be lighting them all up and going back and doing it all again. <laughs> you, just, you just wouldn't use the, the last one as a reset. You'd have 10 different lamps you could potentially light. And then they'll stay lit forever until you take the power off. So you probably want to have some kind of, you know, either a switch or a press to break push button you know, when you want to put them all back off again. You could also make up signs by, in fact, quite small signs, by making up a, a small masked version of whatever letters you wanted, uh, just on a, on a piece of perspex, so that uh, each of the, the letters would just be illuminated by one LED behind uh, each, each letter. So physically print kind of in reverse, so you have a, um, describe this now blank piece of uh, perspex you actually put your individual letters on spray it or whatever remove the letters and you actually have your sign where the, the the clear parts of the perspex would be the letters themselves and you could put tiny leds or micro lits leds behind them uh blocking off behind each of the individual letters so you could yeah. have very very small signs indeed you could do a reversed image on, say, OHP film. Yeah, exactly. For that, and then say, sandwich that, say, have the LEDs behind that. And I don't know if you remember, there used to be in Glasgow, uh, on Jamaica Street, I think it was, there was a giant sign 
it made it her name signs advertising. Who was the goal? It was some jam or something, wasn't it? Robertson's jam. Robins. Robertson's jam. And they would illuminate knee and sign strips at a time to build up a picture and then reset. So it's, it's a variation of what you just said about having letters behind a piece of acetate. You could actually have you know, um, the simulation of parts of the acetate that were clear with this colour colored paper or paint over them. You know, so it come on red and orange and blue and build up a picture. All these things are possible. Uh, going back to something that you did, um, oh, must be a couple of years ago now, Davy. Uh, glue stick ammunition is great for uh, diffusing lead light like that. Uh, also, I've discovered uh, you can now get clear ABS filament, which is effectively you know three millimeters wide or one point seven millimeters wide. And it's a, a filament, and again, you can put a lead in the end of it and use it as a, a lead pipe, like a, a very simple fiber optic. You can either print, 3D print using a, a transparent or translucent plastic, or you can simply melt glue gun sticks. You know the, the hot melt glue gun? Yeah, yeah. The, the stick that you put in the back of that yeah, is a yeah. five or six millimeter diameter translucent thing. If you put a, you drill a little hole and put a lead in one end, at the far mm. end you've got a, it's effectively a thick fibre, optical fibre. Davey's mm -hmm. probably digging it out his image just as we speak, yeah? I found it. There's the, the glue stick we're talking about. Just to show how effective it is at diffusing light. Pretty good, isn't it? You can't even see where the leads are. Just, I've got to get a LED, an LED in each side, but in terms of illumination, it looks completely consistent, doesn't it? Just a hole drilled in it, popped a lead. It doesn't even have to go very far in, as you see. I did it in each side with the droppers onto a nine volt supply. Whoa, too bright. Very even, isn't it? Very even. That would look ideal, for example, in the canopy of a station. If you use a longer piece. And these, and these also come in different diameters, glue sticks, as you know, you get very smaller ones for, uh, for some of the crafts. So you have a smaller diameter still light it up, it'll still go over a longer distance and could be a beautiful even lit canopy for, for a, a station platform. And of course you can melt the glue gun stick and put it and mold it into any shape you want. There you go, Craig. Uh, so I went, went past there while we were talking about that circuit. Because it's a CMOS circuit, it doesn't have to be five volts. Practically all the chips we use are five volts limited and you have to have a five volt supply. CMOS will work at 15 volts. So you don't have to worry about regulating oh, supplies. So it's a it's handy in that way. The 555 is the same. You can put a, a 12 volt supply on it and it'll work just fine. Go back to that circuit very quickly. You'll see it. It's, it's already a 12 volt supply that's on it. Yeah. Let's check this in. 